So last thing I want to do with this scene here, I have one kind of last problem in that I'm trying to sell the idea that this is a lens, I'm looking through a camera, and when I come over here, right, you might not notice a problem with this, but there's a real problem with this, right? This spotlight is fairly bright. You can look at it. It's pretty bright, and it's pointed right at me. And if this was raining and dark, there would be some water on my lens. There would be misty. My lens should light up like it's Christmas. That's bloom. I should be blooming to insanity right now because when a bright light hits a lens, everything blooms and flares and stuff like that. And yet, I don't have any of that, and that's a real problem, right? So I want to add that. And we're going to see something really neat about the post-processing effects. Someone said, how did I animate the camera? I literally just dragged, or, or well, I didn't animate the camera, though that's one I didn't do myself. Uh, someone else has a camera animation that they just dragged and dropped on here. Uh, but you can see it's all just these keyframes and tweens. That's it. Just uh, using the animation window. So nothing, ex nothing that was imported. This is just all made with Unity in record mode. Move, record, move, record, that sort of thing. So I want my camera to flare up like insanity when that light is on. So I'm gonna go to my search light here and I have a collider on it. If I look at my scene, I'll turn that on. I've got a collider. So I've got a giant cone collider on this search light. And that giant cone is telling me uh, when anything is colliding with it. And so as I was saying earlier, with our post-processing volumes, so far we've seen them as global volumes, but I don't want a global volume. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna say, that this is not global, all right? I could do global, but this is a local volume, meaning anything that is in this volume will have the post-processing effects applied. And that's something Unity can do that's really cool. It doesn't have to be a cube. It can be two cubes, a capsule, a cone and a cube, and seven cones, a sphere, and a mesh renderer, or, whatever, or mesh collider, whatever. Anything that you can have a collider on, you can have a post-processing effect volume on, which is really, really cool. And so basically this is not global. It is a it is localized to that collider. Uh, it has a weight of one, a priority of two. So it's my highest priority. And again, I have an empty profile in it right now, but let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. So again, I'm making sure that I'm looking, I have a point on my timeline. Again, I'm using timeline for prototyping here. I'm using timeline to just make sure that light is pointing at me right now. Otherwise I'd have to like manually move that light to test, which is, you know, boring. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and there's a few things that happen when this light shines in you, right? So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go to my color grading here. So if a bright light shines into a camera, the first thing it does is it obviously makes things brighter. So I'm gonna go to my post process uh, exposure. I'm gonna overwrite that value and just set it to one as opposed to 0.8, so a little bit brighter. And it's also gonna desaturate some stuff. So I'm gonna go to my saturation here, and I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. It doesn't need to be a lot, but we want it to desaturate, all right, as the light sort of bled out from this color grading. And that's all I'm gonna do for color grading, all right? And the other thing I'm gonna do is my favorite, bloom. All right, so I'm gonna come here to bloom, and you know, I could go crazy with it again and just insane, uh, but that's, that's actually not gonna, give me the effect that I want. This seems like, okay, yeah, everything's flaring out, but, but we got something better we're gonna do. So I'm gonna leave the intensity at one. For my threshold, I'm actually gonna drop it down just a little bit, which is gonna make a little bit more bloom. Again, subtlety is key. But then here, we're about to do something that, that is the exact opposite of subtle. I'm gonna go down to, to dirtiness, lens dirtiness, because when the light shines on a lens, you're gonna see every imperfection on that lens. So I'm gonna go to texture and Built into the post-processing effect stack are these lens dirt textures. And for the intensity, I'm just gonna drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it. I can go as high with this as I want, but I'll do something there. I usually do around 100. I'll do 117 for this one. So there we go. Super bright. All these lights are flaring. I'm seeing all this dirt and these blips of water and everything on my lens. It's perfect. And because it's a volume, when the, the light isn't on you, you don't see it. And when the light is on you, you do. The last little thing that's kind of annoying, if I hit play, you'll see that the light it is instantaneous. Boom, and then instantaneous, boom. And that's, you know, it's okay. It's not perfect. So the last thing I'm gonna do is this volume. I have it set to, you know, that it's not global or whatever. I'm gonna give it a blend distance. I'm gonna set the blend distance to 0.7. So 70% of its total size. And the result now is it's going to fade in over time as the volume gets closer. There we go. So if I hit play, there we go. So it 
you know, builds up to full strength and then fades away. A very, very cool effect there. All right. And so that is where I want to be with this particular scene here. And uh, we got that there. I'm going to check chat real quick here to make sure there's no questions I'm missing. The rain FX is two parts. It's the image effect on the screen uh, that is these, and then it has these little particles that are the actual particles that represent where the rain hits the ground. You want real rain? Good luck. Liquid cool your PC. Then you'll have water involved. And then a lot of people saying uh, the rain versus using a, using a post-processing versus using particles to get this done. Like I said, you, you could do both. Post, uh, you could achieve some pretty great looks from the post-processing effect. You can have a, a lot of control over it and you don't have to have thousands upon thousands of these little particles, which is what's required to make rain look realistic. So instead, you can just draw them on the screen in, in a pass. Some people asked about visual shaders and visual scripting. They're both on our roadmap. Check them out. Actually, the, the sh uh, shader graph, uh, if you go on our forums, you can read about it. There's uh, That's in the, the latest beta, I believe, which is out. So definitely check that out there. Um, but it is on the forums. You can read more about it. Some very cool stuff. Visual shader editors and things like that. Okay. Let's see here. Can you use post-processing outside of cinematic too? Absolutely. One of sort of my favorite things to do with post-processing effects is things like being damaged. All right. Uh, this is a kind of a cheap, uh, uh, you know, sort of answer, but let's say that light were to damage me or if I was being shot or something like that, I'll just do that. What I could do, oops, didn't mean to drag that over there. What I could do is, let's say I was using post-processing for my scene and stuff like that, and I wanted to have sort of a, a, a red effect for when I was taking damage. I could do uh, color on my vignette, red, intensity, uh, boom. And so if I take damage, the screen goes red, and then as I'm healing, like the weight of that sort of comes back or, or whatever, right? So yeah, we can use post-processing for all sorts of cool stuff, not just cinematics. Obviously, you know, a lot of these effects come from the cinematic world, but the idea is that, you know, we want cinematic effects in games. We want these cool effects, not necessarily in cinema, but in all sorts of stuff. And so, yes, these are definitely aimed at gameplay in real time and, and, and all that stuff, which is pretty slick. 